Good morning. My name is Bo Rutledge. I have the distinct honor of serving as the Dean of the School of Law. And I'd like to welcome you to the commencement ceremony for the class of 2018. where I wish to encourage you that hooting and hollering for your friends and family is not only encouraged, it is obligatory. May I ask you at this time to please turn off your cell phones or place them on vibrate. And I invite you to remain standing for the presentation of the national and state colors by the University of Georgia's Reserve Officer Training Corps, followed by the national anthem sung by Mr. Greg Jacobson, a 2015 graduate of the law school. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled Thank you, you may be seated. Members of the class of 2018, today is your day, a day of unbridled celebration for all that you have achieved to reach this point and all that you will achieve as you embark on your profession. From your earliest days, whether in class with professors Barnett, Kunin, Dennis, and others, introductory classes on the American legal system with professors Doty and Hale, you have prepared yourself for a profession that lies ahead. Along the way during your time here, you have accomplished a great deal. Some of you were part of advocacy teams that helped win four national titles this year alone. One of you was elected the worldwide president of the International Law Students Association. In the law school's clinics, you made history, 
trying to verdict and prevailing the first case ever under Georgia's Hidden Predator Act, securing a landmark victory for disabled clients seeking government benefits, and appearing before judges around the state and country. Let me urge you to continue to approach your vocation with all the passion and dedication that you have poured into your time here. Your profession, like all professions, is built on relationships. Relationships with clients, co-counsel, opposing counsel, judges, members of your community. During your time here, you have built relationships, whether at the annual banquet of the Black Law Student Association, barbecues with Tony Waller, or even receptions where you threw pies at your professors. On behalf of the staff and faculty, I want each of you to know what an honor it has been to accompany you as you tread the path toward fulfillment of your dreams and that our commitment to you indoors. Now at this moment, I'd like to ask you to join me in honoring somebody who helped you along that way. In 2015, a fellow alum of yours, Alex Sklett, became the Associate Director of Student Affairs. And as some of you know, after this summer, Alex will be moving on for an opportunity at the University of Richmond. Many of you forged those relationships with Alex during her time here, and I'd like you to join me in a round of applause honoring all that Alex has done. <laughs> Alex knew I was going to do that. As you join Alex in your alumni ranks, you also join a community of leaders. During your time here, you have had to meet and hear from several. You have met, and one of you interviewed, the former Acting Attorney General of the United States, your fellow alum, Sally Quillian Yates. In a few moments, you will hear from another true leader and fellow alum, Justice Robert Benham, who 50 years ago matriculated at the University of Georgia School of Law. Your degree offers the keys to becoming a leader in your chosen calling, whether a lawyer who fights for his client's rights a businesswoman who provides jobs to the state, a public servant who works to build bridges to a divided community, or simply a leader in your own family. Remember the keys that are being entrusted to you and be ready to answer your own call to leadership when it comes. As you reflect on that journey, remember that you have not undertaken it alone. Your parents, spouses, partners, siblings, children, relatives, baby nephew over on the side, have supported you and will continue to do so. May I ask the family and friends of our graduates to rise and ask you members of the class of 2018 to find them in the audience and congratulate them with a round of applause. Members of the class of 2018, it is now my pleasure to introduce two of your leaders, Hallie Willis and Laura Landtrip. Laura will formally be introduced later in the program, and it's my privilege to introduce Hallie. Hallie is a native of Griffin, Georgia, and attended Georgia Tech for her undergraduate degree. She's the former 1L Section Y Vice President, 2L Class Vice President, a member of the Mock Trial Board, the Georgia Law Review, former Vice President of the Dean's Ambassadors, and more than anything else, for the benefit of all of you in the audience, Hallie is a proud mother of a three-year-old named Rhiannon Catechus Ginsburg, who is a cat, and in November 2016 was named Honorary Law Dog of the Month. Only at the University of Georgia could a cat be the Honorary Law Dog. Hallie Willis and Laura Landrip.
Thank you, Dean Rutledge. Before we, in a, uh, we would like to present the class gift, I would like to introduce Mr. Uh, Andy Davis. Mr. Davis is an attorney with the law firm of Brinson, Askew, Barry, Siegler, Richardson, and Davis. As a partner, he specializes in complex business litigation, personal injury, governmental official liability, and class actions. He serves as city attorney for the city of Rome, lead attorney for the Rome Floyd County Development Authority, and general counsel for Shorter University. In 2016, Andy was named a fellow of the American College of Trial Lawyers, one of the premier legal associations in the US. Since 2006, he has been named a Georgia Super Lawyer by Law and Politics Magazine and Atlanta Magazine. He is an active member of the Federation of Defense and Corporate Counsel. Andy is an experienced litigator having tried numerous cases in federal and superior courts. For one of his cases, he was featured on the investigative Discovery Channel's Behind Mansion Walls TV show. Andy served as lead and trial counsel for 56 funeral homes in the internationally known class action multi-district litigation involving the tri-state uh, crem crematory in Noble, Georgia. Andy served as counsel for cities, um, cities involving uh, cities and counties in Georgia in the class action litigation against the online travel companies for excise taxes. Andy continues to serve as class administrator for the settlement. Andy, would you please join us at the stage along with Dean Rutledge? On behalf of the class of 2018, welcome to Georgia Law's commencement ceremony. Today is a celebration for all of us, not just those of us sitting here in these bulky, really warm robes and silly hats. We couldn't have made it where we are today without all of you. To our esteemed guests, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Doty, Dean Rutledge, Justice Benham, Provost Witten, Mr. Davis, Laura, Dean Ringhan, Dean Rodriguez, Dean Schur, Professor Hale, Professor Barnett, Pro Professor Shipley, and Mr. Jacobson. Thank you to all of the faculty and staff who are not on the stage today. You have nurtured us, enlightened us, and advocated for us over the past three years. Thank you to our scholarship donors who helped many of us attend law school here at UGA. Thank you to our family and friends you stood by us for the past three years. Despite the many stressed out phone calls, the canceled or postponed plans, the missed holidays and vacations, we share this day with you, our support network, because without your love, we might not be here today. And thank you to Kirby Smart for giving us such an amazing football season. <laughs> Class of 2018, Thank you. I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for you. Apparently that's how non-contested elections work. In all seriousness, I wouldn't have asked for a greater group of friends to have spent the past three years with. Look how far we've come. In August of 2015, we arrived at Hirschhofer orientation, not knowing what to expect from the next three years. We wore our biggest smiles as we met our classmates and Jake Morris wore his shortest American flag chubby shorts, which apparently he is also wearing right now. <laughs> that night we celebrated with our new friends. Under the porches of Magnolia's drink in hand, Caitlin Fain asked me what type of note-taking software I was going to be using. And later that night, to everyone's surprise, Will Taylor hit up the dance floor of 90s. We learned how to brief cases, we took the headshots that will haunt us for the rest of our lives, and we savored the meal tokens we were given for lunches at Tate. We didn't know what the next three years would bring us, but we looked at ourselves, and we turned to each other, and we said, we can do this. So we did. Nothing they taught us during orientation could have ever prepared us for those first day of class cold calls. 
For those of you who have not attended law school, there is truly no word in the English language to accurately describe that gut-wrenching feeling you get when you hear your name come out of a professor's mouth for the first time. Let's be honest, it doesn't go away after the first time either. We formed study groups and we made our outlines. Together, we survived pulling all-nighters to finish our memos and briefs. Even more impressing, though, we survived the memo and brief parties we had afterwards. We prepared for finals by taking practice exams. Let's just say those weren't nearly as intense as the real things. I, much like most of Section Y, will never forget the pep talk Professor Eaton gave us before our first round of exams. He reminded us that our worth was not found in the letter grade we received on our law school finals. He reminded us of all that we had already accomplished and all that we would continue to accomplish in our lives. Several of us left the class in tears. We got through those first round of exams together and then we headed downtown for a celebratory beer or two. We were worn down, exhausted, so we headed home for Christmas break. We came back refreshed and ready for our second semester. And again, we looked at ourselves and said, we can do this. In the end, we survived one all year. We thought to ourselves, the hardest part is over, right? Wrong. 2-0-fall arrived, and along with it came mock trial, moot court, negotiations, sight checks, long notes and short notes, and job searches. Oh, and did I mention we still had class? No doubt we were busy and we were overwhelmed, but each of these things gave us the opportunities to succeed. And so again, we looked at each other and we said, we can do this. Professor Eaton's words again became so important. Our worth was not found in our GPA, but in all that we accomplished that year. We left behind a legacy at Georgia Law, filled with numerous national championship titles in our advocacy programs, over 40 esteemed publications for our journals. We somehow convinced employers to hire us for the summer. We worked in clinics, serving clients who wouldn't otherwise have access to justice. And just like that, we entered our 3L year. We relaxed, we 3 l would we knew that the year would be full of celebration, so we looked at each other and we said, heck yeah, we can definitely do this. We came together as our group for our last season of football to cheer on the dogs. We cheered them all the way to the national championship. Ask me if I'm still devastated about that. We came back after our last Christmas break and cherished every moment we had with our friends. We counted down the days until we would walk across the stage in the courtyard for our day's parties. Cam Solano and Alex Prescott led the Law Dogs to the final four of the UVA Law Softball Invitational. <laughs> we made it through our last round of finals ever and finished up the semester strong. As we move forward into our next phases of our lives, I'm confident that the bonds we have formed here, this community, will only grow stronger. We sit amongst a group of diverse, intelligent, driven, funny, thoughtful, kind, and passionate scholars. I'm so honored to have been able to represent this class over the past three years. This welcome address wasn't actually my first draft. I decided it wasn't actually appropriate for me to plagiarize L. Woods' entire commencement speech from Legally Blonde. I had to close, though, by using some of her words. So with no further ado, class of 2018, we did it. Haley, thank you. On behalf of the University of Georgia Law School Alumni Association, I want to thank the class of 2018 for the legacy gift. Uh, it was quite an honor to be able to receive that. Those monies will go back into use for scholarships. And it's truly an honor to be a part of this graduation ceremony this morning. I gave up my invitation to the royal wedding so I could be here. Um, and speaking of royal marriages. My wife and I, when I was in law school, were married. And I know just like your parents, your spouses, your significant others, your children, they're very proud of you, just like my wife was the day I graduated in 1984. 
She was proud of me to, to be that, and it's probably because we're going to be moving out of married housing. Um, but so yesterday when we were driving over here, we were reminiscing about the time we were in law school, and I said, Janice, in your wildest dreams, did you ever think that I would be speaking to the Georgia Law School graduation? She looked at me and she said, honey, you aren't in my wildest dreams. <laughs> As you've learned these past three years, you're all storytellers. Everyone has a story. You started your story when you entered this world and you, com you continue to write your story with what you've accomplished today. The three years you've spent here in law school when you um, helped develop part of that story, and I'm sure you've developed the appropriate theme for the, this chapter in your life. This chapter has generally been about relationships, relationships you've made and cultivated during law school. And as a result of these relationships and the bond that you've formed with your fellow students, you've become part of the University of Georgia School of Law and it has become part of you. It may be that the relationships you developed in that first year section will ultimately lead to you becoming lieutenant governor, governor, a justice, or a judge, or even the president of the United States. But the relationships you make in law school will carry throughout your career. They will be a major part of your story the relationships may end up being part of where you obtain a big verdict or be on the side of a defense verdict or being part of another story. But whatever your story, whatever your place in life, this law school has played a major role in your development and your career. Cherish these moments and remember the fond memories of law school and being a Georgia law dog. University of Georgia Law School, Prepare, connect, lead. You are definitely prepared. You've made connections, and you will be leaders. A great leader, a graduate of this law school, Earl Leonard, who was former vice president of Coca-Cola Affairs, used to always talk about when raising money for the University of Georgia. He said, when mama calls, you got to answer. Well, the law school is going to be calling. We hope that you will answer. You've started well today with the legacy gift. Uh, I've been giving for a number of years. I hope that you will also give back so that you can help the law school to prepare, connect, and lead students to write their stories in the future. Thank you again for the legacy gift. Thank you for your commitment to the University of Georgia Law School. Congratulations, class of 2018, and welcome to the University of Georgia Law School Alumni Association. Good morning. I'm going to speak to you today because I have had the singular honor of serving as the Associate Dean for Faculty Development for three and a half years. As the graduates know, my fellow professors are a brilliant, dedicated, and patient group of teachers and scholars. I'm proud beyond measure to call myself a member of this faculty. And now I'm speaking to today's graduates. We, your faculty, have worked with you, the class of 2018, for three years. We taught you in classrooms and in clinics. We met with you in our offices and over coffee and other beverages. We have watched you grow in countless ways, from 1Ls nervous about the start of law school to 3Ls nervous about life after law school. It has been an honor to train you, the future lawyers, the future leaders of this great state and nation. We have helped 
pave the road for you over the course of these three years. And now we let you go back into the world. We are so proud of you. And we hope that you're proud of us too. I know that I am proud to serve on this faculty. I'll ask my colleagues to please stand. Graduates of 2018 and their distinguished guests, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the faculty of the University of Georgia School of Law. Please join me in recognizing them. Thank you, Dean Rodriguez. I am Alex Schur, and I am, in short form, the Associate Dean of Clinics. It is a pleasure and a privilege to be here, speaking to the class of 2018, and to their families, supporters, and all-around fans. There's nothing like the experience of walking into this room and seeing all these faces waiting to see their graduate with pleasure and with pride. I'm here to praise this class. This group of young lawyers has done more than any other in the school's history to prepare for the experience of practicing law. Nearly 90% of you took at least one clinic or externship course, working with experienced lawyers to prepare for careers as advocates, negotiators, neutrals, and counselors. This class has set records in the range of its choices. Nearly 50% of you took two or more distinct clinical courses, and 60% of you took two or more semesters in a clinic. Finally, you've participated in record-setting numbers in a growing program of summer public interest fellowships. Through all of this preparation, you have also connected with clients, with projects, with the law, and with the legal profession. Let me give you a few examples. One student participated in three different clinics, but still found time to play a critical role on the inaugural staff of the Clark County Self-Help Clinic, helping over 50 people who could not afford lawyers to navigate the legal system with the help of volunteer judges and attorneys. Another student, as Dean Rutledge mentioned, advocated in a trial in the CEASE Clinic representing a victim of childhood sexual abuse who sought a remedy from the abuser. This student delivered the opening statement and handled the questioning of a key witness in a case that resulted in a significant victory for the client and for the clinic. Finally, several students, several teams of students in the community health clinic noticed that a state agency was not offering accommodations to people with disabilities who applied for help. Over several semesters of patient work, the student, uh, students obtained an order that will change the agency's practice to assure that their clients will be dealt with in accordance with the law and with respect for the barriers that they face. Prepare, connect. What's left for you to do is lead. You can lead in your families by living a balanced and a centered life by acting on your own most strongly felt values. You can lead in your practices by selecting work that challenges and has an impact on your world, and by representing your clients with wisdom and compassion. And finally, you can lead in your communities, extending and reinforcing the rule of law and accepting and pursuing the inevitably public role of being a lawyer. It is now with distinct pleasure that I welcome your class vice president, Laura Landrup. Laura is a native of Birmingham, Alabama, and attended the University of Alabama, where she graduated magna cum laude with a degree in psychology. While in law school, Laura served as marshal for Phi Alpha Delta Law Fraternity and worked as a student representative for Thomson Reuters. I had the pleasure of working with Laura twice in her clinical work when she interned with the Elder Legal Assistance Project, and when she served as a law clerk for the Clark County Probate Court. Laura also volunteered 
with the Athens Peer Court, the Jefferson County Public Defender's Office, and the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Georgia. After graduation, Laura is looking forward to starting her career in her hometown of Birmingham. Please welcome Miss Laura Landrup. Thank you, Dean Scherr, for that warm welcome. It is now my honor to introduce this year's commencement speaker. Justice Robert Benham began his judicial career on the Court of Appeals of Georgia, where he served for six years beginning in 1984. In 1989, he was appointed to the Supreme Court of Georgia and served as presiding justice from 1994 to 1995. Justice Benham became Chief Justice in 1995 and held that position until 2001. He continues to serve on the court, having been reelected in 2008 to serve his fourth six-year term. During Justice Benham's tenure as Chief Justice, the Supreme Court of Georgia was listed as one of the most progressive Supreme Courts in the nation by the American Bar Association Journal. Additionally, Justice Benham was listed in Georgia Trend Magazine as one of the 100 most influential Georgians for six years while serving as Chief Justice and is presently listed as a notable Georgian. He was named by Ebony Magazine as one of the 100 most influential blacks in America for three consecutive years during his term as Chief Justice of the Georgia Supreme Court. Justice Benham was educated at Tuskegee University, the University of Georgia, and the University of Virginia. He engaged in the private practice of law for 15 years before entering the judiciary. Justice Benham serves on the Board of Curators of the Georgia Historical Society, Board of Directors of the Georgia Preservation and Trust, Westville Historical Society, Noble Hill Wheeler Historical Society, and the Georgia Legal History Foundation. He is a past master in the Bleckley Inns of Court and a member of the Georgia Chamber of Commerce. He has also served on the University of Georgia Foundation as chairman of the University of Georgia Law School Alumni Association, and on numerous, numerous other social, civic, professional, fraternal, and business organizations. Justice Benham has been honored with many awards, including Distinguished Service Awards from the State Bar of Georgia, Martin Luther King Jr. Commission, and the NAACP. He was the proud recipient of the 2004 Spirit of Scouting Award. Justice Benham is a former member of the American Trial Lawyers Association, the Georgia Trial Lawyers Association, and Georgia Conference of Black Lawyers. He served on the Board of Directors of the Conference of Chief Justices and as United States Supreme Court Chief Justice William Rehnquist's appointee to the Federal State Jurisdiction Committee. He currently serves on the Board of Directors of the Judicial Council of the National Bar Association and is the State of Georgia's liaison to the National Consortium on Racial and Ethnic Fairness in the Courts. Justice Benham has lectured at numerous law schools and served as facilitator for legal conferences in 26 states on topics ranging from judicial administration to appellate practice. In the legal arena, he was instrumental in creating Georgia's indigent defense program, and he received national, state, and local awards for creating Georgia's first drug courts. The State Bar of Georgia Community Service Award is named after Justice Benham, as well as the first law camp for high school students. He received the Distinguished Public Service Award from the litigation section of the Atlanta Bar Association and is the 2007 R. Prudence Herndon Award from the Gate City Bar Association. He recently received the 2007 William Hastie Award from the National Bar Association at its national meeting held in Atlanta. Justice Benham created Georgia's first comprehensive legal education program, which has allowed over 200 minority students to attend law school. Justice Benham has also received numerous awards and recognitions for his involvement with the business community. His family has been involved in various types of businesses from the year 1880 to the present. He is a lifetime member of the Cartersville Bartow Chamber of Commerce, and he is a member of the Georgia Chamber of Commerce. Recently, Justice Benham received the first Ethics Advocacy Award from the Southern Center for Ethics and Professionalism, where he serves on the Board of Directors. Justice Benham has served as Chairman of the Coosa Valley Area Planning and Development Commission, Bartow County Development Authority, and he serves as the Georgia Supreme Court Liaison for the Fulton County Business Court. He was the 2005 recipient of the J.W. Fanning Award from the Leadership Georgia Foundation, he has received the National Pharmacy Award of Achievement, National Alumni Award from the University of Georgia, National Trumpet Award, which salutes African-American achievement, 
the Alumni Outstanding Service Award from Tuskegee University, and the Outstanding Service and Contribution Award from the National Association of Blacks in Criminal Justice. Justice Benham is a member of the Deacons Board of the Greater Mount Olive Baptist Church, and he is a member of the Ada Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha, and a member of Kappa Bull. He is a Mason, Shriner, and Elk. Justice Benham is married to the former Nell Dodson, and they have two children, Corey and Austin, and four grandchildren. Please welcome Justice Benham. Laura, thank you for that very generous, though undeserved, but much appreciated uh, introduction. And thank you for making such a long introduction uh, in view of the fact that my wife is here. And I've been trying to impress her for a number of years <laughs> because I was not her father's first choice to be her, her husband. I'd like for you to meet my wife, Mayall, who's sitting over there. <laughs> to Dean Rutledge, the members of the faculty, and the many guests here today, and especially the graduates, I want to thank you for inviting a member of the judiciary to come and participate in this law school graduation. To the parents who are here, the friends of the loved ones of the law school, I share your pride in the accomplishments of these wonderful young people. Now on behalf of some 50,000 lawyers in this state, some 1,800 judges, and to a host of legal professionals, we congratulate you young people in reaching this significant milestone in your legal career. It has come about because of hard work, sacrifice, determination, and perseverance. And we applaud the significant efforts you have made. My wife has already warned me that I have no more than 18 minutes. So let me get to the task of the hand, at hand. I come from what's known as a romantic generation. No matter what happens, we try to see the beauty of what happened. So let me share with you this poem. It's called A Bag of Tools. This is, isn't it strange? that princes and kings, and clowns that caper and solder strings, and common people like you and me are builders for eternity. Each is given a bag of tubes, a shapeless mass, and a book of rules. And each must make, before life is gone, a stumbling block or a stepping stone. So I want to talk to you, graduates, as to what you can do to turn your stumbling blocks into stepping stones. I know that in order for you to succeed, you had to have the help of great parents, wonderful siblings, supportive family members, friendly neighbors, and most importantly, an intact system of valuables, valuable principles. I hope at the end of the ceremony, you will look for someone who helped you along the way and personally thank them and congratulate them for helping make this day possible. And also on behalf of the many judges and lawyers in the state, we celebrate you and we celebrate your accomplishments. But we want you to know that while we sit in judgment on others, the day will come when we stand before one who sits high 
and look slow, that he will call upon us to give an account of the deeds of our body. So in preparation for that day, we on the court, while we administer justice, realize that sometimes justice does not feel good because we must hold our fellow citizens accountable for their deeds. And while all of our decisions are not pleasant, our decisions are often consistent. And that is, if we get it wrong, we will get it wrong consistently. And if we get it right, we hope that we will get it right consistently. As newly minted graduates, we want you to find ways to improve the quality of life of all our citizens. And in doing that, we must get out into the community and look at what is happening. Some 50 years ago, when I came to the bar, that still sounds like a long time ago. I wanted to make a difference in my community. And so I looked to see the different problems that were taking place. Now I hope that you will bring some innovative and creative approaches to the legal profession and help us improve the quality of life of all of our citizens. It's my sincere hope that you will use your legal education not only to improve the legal system, but also to improve society in general. In order to do that, you're going to have to kick some dogs that have been sleeping on the porch a long time. And when I came, became a lawyer, I decided that since I was already a bulldog, I might as well kick some dogs. And so I started systematically from Atlanta to work with legal aid. And I sued slumlords. I wanted to make sure that people would have a, de a decent place to live. And then I moved north to Cobb County, joined Roy Barnes, and we served as special prosecutors to prosecute those people who had committed crimes, especially against people of color who were not being held accountable. It was not an easy task to do, but the law is not respecter of a person or a position. And then I had the difficult task of going back to my hometown and suing people in my hometown. But I went back home because my judge was a graduate of the University of Georgia. And he said, you cannot complain about snow on somebody else's roof until you're willing to complain about snow on your own roof. And so I began a systematic approach of litigating and housing discrimination and various forms of discrimination all the way from my hometown, all the way to Chattanooga, Tennessee. And then I decided I would go west and I litigated cases all the way to Alabama. And I got a call asking if I would represent people who were already on death row. And I thought, as a lawyer, not only could I help people, I could save people's lives. And so I successfully got people off death row who had already been sentenced to death. My wife and I had serious talks about that. My wife said, if they do the crime, they should serve the time. 
I said, in order to do that, lawyers must be willing to represent not only the popular people, but also the unpopular people. During that period of time, it was my pleasure to bring lawsuits against factories and businesses who were discriminating against employers on the basis of race, gender, and ethnicity. And now when you go through North Georgia and go through the carpet mills, you will see people who not only are employees, but are supervisors and plant managers because somebody was willing to take up the fight for them. But then, some 30 years ago, I had the difficulty of representing AIDS patients who were being denied access to hospitals because of their medical condition. And I felt as a lawyer there was a responsibility to see that everyone would be entitled to adequate medical treatment. These are the things that lawyers do. These are the things that you must do. While you represent institutional clients, you must also be willing to represent unfortunate clients and clothe them with justice so that they will stand equal before the bar of justice. After a number of years, I came home one evening. My wife stood in the door and I said, honey, you should have seen me in court. And she says, hold that thought for a moment. She said, I want to show you something. She took me in my son's bedroom and she woke him up and she said, baby, this man who wolfs down his food at the table, this man who comes to church late and leaves early, this man who makes cameo appearances in our home. In case you didn't know it, this is your daddy. Now I saw that as a weak moment in my wife's life. And as a lawyer, I had been trained that in the presence of weakness, I should go for the jugular. I told my son to sit up in the bed. And I said, your daddy is a lawyer. My cousins before me wanted to be lawyers, but the opportunities weren't there. And you need to think about being a lawyer too. That little six-year-old boy wiped the matter out of his eyes and he looked me right in the eye and he says, oh no daddy, I don't want to be a lawyer because if you're a lawyer, you're never home with your children. Now I want you law students to think about that and understand that the law has a place, but your family has a place too. And you cannot put your profession above your family. Now that's a simple message, but it took me decades to learn it. And I want you to start off being cognizant of it. The law is a profession. It should not be an obsession. 
Guard your time wisely. Share with your friends wisely. The last message is that somebody invested in you and you owe them a return on their investment. My little country church invested in me. It was made up of maids and janitors and cooks and service employees. Nobody from my church had ever gone to college except my older brother. And when my church found out that I wanted to go to college, the preacher called me up to the front of the church and then they call you master. They said, Master Robert is going to school and we needed to do what we know we must do. And they passed the basket among those maids and janitors and service employees. Some put in a penny, some put in a nickel, some put in a dime, a few put in a quarters. One person put in a half a dollar, but they collected $25. The preacher took a handkerchief and wrapped the money in it, and he said, go off and make us proud. I kept that handkerchief all during my career, and when times seemed hard, I pull out that handkerchief and realize somebody invested in me and they were due a return on their investment. To the graduates, someone invested in you and they are due a return on their investment. So let me end with a poem. I'm from what you call the romantic generation. We see good in everything that happens. And it's from a poem by Alan Drumgoo called The Bridge Builder. It says, an old man going along the way came in the evening, cold and gray, to a chasm vast and deep and wide, and he crossed it in the twilight dim for the sullen stream offered no fear for him. And when he reached safe, the other side, he built a bridge to span the tide. Old man, said a fellow traveler near, you're wasting your time in building here. Your journey will end at the end of the day. You never again will pass this way. You've crossed a chasm, vast and deep and wide. Why build your bridge in the evening tide? The old man lifted his old gray head. Good friend in the path I've come, he said. There falleth after me today a youth whose feet too must cross this way. This chasm which has been as naught to me may to a fair-haired youth a pitfall be. For they too must cross in the twilight dim, good friend, I'm building this bridge for them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Justice, for that inspiring address. It is now my honor to introduce the four faculty members who will be assisting Dean Rutledge in presenting you, our graduating students. Professor Alice Hale is the Director of the Academic Enhancement Program and the Faculty Advisor for our Masters in the Study of Law Program. She will be reading the names of our graduating MSL students. Professor Kathleen Doty is the director of the Dean Rusk International Law Center, and she will be reading the names of our graduating LLM students. And Professors David Shipley and Kent Burnett 
also known as our awesome administrative law dynamic duo, um, have been selected by the, by the students to read the names of our graduating JD students. Thank you. Okay, members of class of 2018, this is the moment. In a moment, I will ask Justice Benham, Dr. Witten, and Mr. Davis to join me on stage to congratulate you as each of you cross. But first, you need to have the degree formally conferred on you. And so at this time, I would ask all of you to please rise. This is where the hooting and hollering becomes very important. <laughs> Dr. Witten, on behalf of the faculty of the University of Georgia School of Law, I am pleased to introduce the candidates for the degrees Master in the Study of Law Master of Laws, and Juris Doctor. Well, I have the shortest script today, but I will say that I think I have the most important line to be said in all the scripts today. This is going to be the line that makes it official in terms of the degrees that you are being awarded today. So. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia, I confer upon you the degrees of Master in the Study of Law, Master of Laws, and Juris Doctorate with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto appertaining. Congratulations. Master in the Study of Law. Janita Jacquees Daniel. Ryan Moore. Mitchell Bradley Nemeth. Joseph K. Schubert. Stephanie Renee Williams. Master of Laws, Thelma Aguilar Pierce, Shruti Bangalore Rajakumar, Marie Brigitte Beljun, Shah Hussein. Pierre Lafouré. Chukudi Bambirele Ofele. Chioma Francis Ogbozo. Jessica Perez Salazar. Adriana Maria Sarria Mena. Chen Song. Valeria Subocheva Smith. Haibin Wong. Pa 
Padham Zohedi. Chen Ming Zhou. Juris Doctor. Jeremy Paul Aiken. Megan McKenzie Albert. Kaylee L. Anderson. Benjamin E. Aqua. Taryn L. Arbiter. Michael D. Ani. Michael Lawrence Baker. Devondrell Tamisha Banks. Victoria Ann Barker. Delton W. Barnes. William Spencer Barrow. Jackson William Beck. Danielle Sasana Berenson. Shayla J. Bivens. Jarrell Jamont Bogan. Holly Martha Boggs. Joel D. Bradley. Campbell Tyson Brantley. Brianna Ashley Burroughs. Ian Elijah Calhoun. Alexander A. Kasky. Gary Roderick Casper III. Matthew Strom Chandler. Chanel Olivia Chauvet. Margaret Ann Christie. Cameron J. Solano. Catherine F. Coyman. Christopher W. Collins. Lorcan Lewis Connick. Justin T. Conway. Noelle Elizabeth Couch. There we go. Matthew J. Corto. Preston Newcomb Cox. Andrew Thomas Kraft. Audria K. Crane. Lauren L. Krim. Truman J. Crockett. Spencer Newton Davis. Megan Colleen Dempsey. Devon N. Dennis. Kyle A. Denslow. Shreya 
for fool decide. Rubio Dong Jr. Mary Randolph Doval. Evan Clayton Dunn. Benjamin F. Durfee. Taylor Shea Eisenhower. Emily Catherine Esco. Caitlin Claire Fain. John Esmond Farmer. Hannah Ponders Feist. Robert C. Fierro. Thomas F. Bench. Zachary H. Fuller. Morgan D. Giddens. Ryan L. Giles. Danielle N. Glover. Matthew David Goble. Ava Gray Goble. Rachel N. Goldberg. Elizabeth Lainel Gooch. Jonathan Robert Gordon. <laughs> Chase C. Graham. Clint Elaine Gillibo. Lyall Leanne Harb. William Carol Brown Hart. Markle David Harvey. Karen E. Hayes. Valeria Nikita Hemingway. William Neal Hollington. Garrett D. Hollis. Mary S. Honeychurch. Nathan Daniel Hovey. Benita Ann Huggins. Jordan Lynn Jackson. Rebecca Ann James. Ryland J. Jennings. Christopher D. Johnson. Caroline Ann Joseph Check. Maria Kani Ash. <laughs> Destiny Denise Kelly. Anthony Colum Kennedy. Samantha Kessler. Phila Kim. Jesse Anna Kimball. Courtney Lee Kramer. 
Oliver Richard Ladd. Ian M. Lamb. Laura M. Lantrip. Grace Palmer Liu. Dana Lorberg. Lauren Elizabeth Reasoner Lutton. Levi Malcolm Lyman Barner. Jared Bryans Magnuson. Robert P. Mangum. <laughs> Timothy B. Marlowe. Yeah! Harris Ray Mason. <laughs> Carly Marie Mathis. Cody Michael Mathis. Natasha Mouse. Congratulations. Clayton Corey McLean. <laughs> Emily A. McCutcheon. Congratulations. Jamie McDowell. <laughs> Sean Eric McKenzie. Connor A. McLaughlin. Collier Elizabeth McLeod. Annabelle McWhorter. Rebecca Ellen Messinger. Nicole Marie Metch. Pfeiffer Martin Middleton. Nathan Robert Miles. Ann Parks Minor. Thanks. Jake Paul Morris. Aiden Moss. Mr. Mulligan. Dylan Edward Mulligan. Ryan Joseph Mumper. Congratulations. Molly Agnes Munson. Kristen Grace Murphy. Michelle K. Najam. Kayla Page Nettles. Deborah Nagura Yates. S. Tyler Normandia. Natalie C. North. Nicole Novacell. Hey, Dad. William Blake Ogden. Stephen Chase Parker. Joseph Perry. Ryan Adele Patrick. Brian Patton. Surya Chadawi Pabaluri. Elizabeth Ann Penland. Skip the page. Daniel E. Filia. Kenneth A. Pilgrim. Matthew Thaxton Porter. Joseph Alexander Prescott. 
Claire Hunt Pravana. Elizabeth Newsom Rawlings. Alexandra Marie Reynolds. Catherine Nicole Reynolds. Okay. Davis Cannon Riddle. Laney J. Riley. Sarah E. Robertson. Jacob Ethan Sauce. Matthew David Sanders. Tyler Mark Sandifer. Caroline Savini. Gracie Gold Shepherd. Catherine Elaine Shepherd. Ryan Holden Shriver. Cody Lee Schubert. Patrick Schuler. Elizabeth Grace Sims. Joseph Philip Sklar. Courtney Page Smith. Zalita Viola Smith. Margaret Elizabeth Sparks. Troy T. Stewart. Stewart Fallon Sumner. Adam Joseph Sundstrom. I think I got this. Ryan Frank Swindle. Mr. Zwerski. Ryan D. Zwerski. Nicholas J. Tate. Beverly Elizabeth Tarver. William Chandler Bonham Taylor. Rachel E. Thompson. Jamila A. Toussaint. Oliver Tum Sudan. <laughs> Alina Vanek. <laughs> Nicholas George Vretakis. <laughs> Max Matthew Wallace. <laughs> Amanda Lynn Ward. Wheaton Webb. <laughs> Lee Ding Watling. Amanda Mailey Whitlock. Amanda Muse Williams. <laughs> Hannah M. Williams. Jeremy Williams. Hallie E. Willis. Haley Robin Wilson. Haley Elizabeth Wilson. Whoops. Taryn Patrice Winston. Tony. Wormald. Katie M. Roten. 
Yun Jung Yang. Honor Yildirim. Benjamin Nathan Young. Stephen Daniel Zavodnik. Devin Gail Zyko. Alicia Zinchenko. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the University of Georgia School of Law Class of 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the University of Georgia School of Law Class of 2018. Okay. So here's what's going to happen. Uh, in a minute, the band is going to strike up the recessional. The platform party will exit the gymnasium, followed by the graduates at which point you are welcome to join your sons, daughters, friends, family onto the floor to take a brief photo. I arrived here about 7 o'clock this morning and there was a hardworking crew already working to make this place beautiful. They need to do it again for a graduation at 3 o'clock. And so I would ask you to take that opportunity after we exit, grab those photos, and then please turn the facility over to them. Congratulations again.